الحمد لله الماضي برحمته وفضله المانع بحكمته وعدله أحمده سبحانه لا رد لأمره ولا معقب لحكمه وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد عبده ورسوله أفضل أنبيائه وخير رسله اللهم صل وسلم على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه All thanks are due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala I thank and glorify him He guided us to the best path and the sunnah of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam I bear witness that there is nothing worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone with no partners or associates. Also I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. He sent him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to us as a favor and bounty from himself. O oh Allah, send prayer upon and have mercy for and bless Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions, and all those who follow in their footsteps until the day of judgment. Amen. In continuation of the uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, today's khutbah is about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-mu'min al-muhaymin Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Huwa Allahu alladhi la ilaha illa huwa al-maliku al-quddusu al-salamu al-mu'min al-muhaymin al-aziz al-jabbar al-mutakabbir Subhanallah amma yushrikun He is Allah. There is no deity but Him. He is the King, the most pure, the perfect peace, the trustworthy, the safeguarder, the Almighty, the compiler, the supremely great. Glory be to Allah above all that they associate with Him. Al Mu'min means who has granted safety to His servants by promising that He will never be unjust to them. According to the Dahab, who reported it from Ibn Abbas. Qatada said that Al-Mu'min means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala affirms that his statements are true. While Ibn Zayd said that it means he attested to his faithful servants having faith in him. Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the bestower of faith, the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put their full trust in Him. Their hearts are reassured with this knowledge. And they trust that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will protect them in life. Their hearts are at ease knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is a bestower of faith. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala presented a pleasing life to
to believers, both in this world and the next. This life, which is perfect in all respects, makes them spiritually strong. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the spiritual peace and security to sincere believers. When they face any difficulty, he supports them, confirms his signs on their hearts, and through the trust they put in him, allows them to lead a peaceful life. The Quran informs us about this spiritual support after the companions suffered a defeat during the times of our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Surah Tawbah verses 25 to 27 means Allah has helped you on many occasions including the day of Hunayn when your great number delighted you but did not help you in any way and the land seemed narrow to you for all its great breadth. And you turned your backs. Then Allah sent down his serenity on his messenger and on the believers. And sent down troops you could not see. And punished those who were unbelievers. That's how the unbelievers are repaid. Then after that, Allah will turn to anyone He wills. Allah is ever forgiving, most merciful. There have always been people who insisting upon denying Allah. Uh, work to turn sincere believers away from the straight path and to their own man-made religion. When believers reject the, this call, unbelievers threaten and oppress them. But during such times, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides all forms of support and undermined the unbelievers effort as the Quran reveals in Surah Al-Fatih verses 48 and uh, verses 26. The translation means those who are disbelievers filled their hearts with fanatical rage. The fanatical rage of the time of ignorance and Allah sent down serenity to his messenger and to the believers and bound them to the expression of hatefulness to which they had most right and were most entitled. Allah has knowledge of all things. Many other verses inform us about this spiritual support especially that given to the messengers when the unbelievers forced our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to immigrate. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to support him, hindered the unbelievers attacks and sent down serenity upon his heart. This support is related in the following verse. In Surah Al Tawbah, verse 40. Translation If you do not help him, Allah did help him. When the unbelievers drove him out, and there were two of them in the cave, he said to his companion, Do not be despondent, Allah is with us. Then Allah sent down his serenity upon him and reinforced him with troops you could not see. He made the world of the unbelievers the lowest of the low. 
It is the word of Allah that is uppermost. Allah is Almighty, all wise. While Allah gives His sincere servants feelings of security and serenity, the peace and security of the hereafter are far beyond our comprehension. For one, of, for one thing, they will last for all eternity. If Allah so wills, Allah describes this unique state of material and spiritual containment as follows. In Surah Al-Hijr, verses 45 to 48, translation, those who guard against evil will be aimed gardens and springs. Enter them in peace, in complete security. We will strip away any rancor in their heart. Brothers and sisters resting on couches face to face. They will not be affected by any tiredness there and will never be made to leave. We need to start living with Allah's attributes and names. At every point in our life, there is a certain name that will seem especially needed for us, or that will have a certain appeal based on your spiritual, physical, or emotional states, or maybe based on whatever challenges you face in life. The divine names of Al-Mu'min, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala call himself in the Quran, the word comes from the root word Amana, which has the following meanings. To be secure, safe, free from fear. To be quiet, tranquil to grant protection, safeguard, to be trusted, trustworthy, to believe in. And it is from this root that we have the word Iman, which we translate as faith or belief. By calling himself Al-Mu'min, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is calling himself the remover of fear the giver of tranquility, the source of faith, the one who faithfully bestows the gifts of peace, safety, and security, the one who grants freedom from fear, the one who illuminates the heart with faith, the one who is most trustworthy, he who constantly repeats this name is granted security and protection. But we hope that by repeating it, we can keep increasing in Iman. Ya Allah, I ask you by every name belonging to you, which you have named yourself with, or which you revealed in your book, or which you taught to any of your creation, or which you have preserved in the knowledge of the unseen with you, that you make the Quran the life of my heart and the light of my breast and a departure of my sorrow and a release for my anxiety. أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم أدعو الله عسى أن تكون هذه ساعة إجابة supplicate may Allah accept our supplication at this time.
الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم وبارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون This, the attributes here is the muhaymin. This attribute has a double meaning revolving around the notion of being clear first it identifies Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as being the clear and manifest truth second it reflects his promise that he will make everything clear to us on the day of judgment this will include the true magnitude of our actions good or bad knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the manifest that he is clear uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, he is Allah other than whom there is no deity the sovereign, the pure, the perfection, the bestower of faith, the observer, the exalted in might, the compiler, the superior, exalted is Allah above whatever they associate with him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees the hearts and hears everything. He is the witness for his servants and he watches over them always. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is always with his servants through his sight and knowledge. Watching and having all of their deeds recorded. Knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the observer watching over his creature makes the servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala aware of their actions sayings and intentions at all times they are keenly conscious of the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regard to their deeds and they consider this with everything that they do and say. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the protector and the guardian. He is the one who sees to the evolutions and the growth of his creation, leading them where they are destined to go. Nothing escapes his attention for a moment. He is the one who watches the good deeds and rewards them fully. He counts the sins exactly, not adding to their punishment even an amount the size of a mustard seed. One may find the reflections of a muhaymin in oneself through consciousness and awareness by watching intentionally one's actions, words, thoughts and feelings and by trying to control them. Abdul Muhaymin is he who sees the existence 
and the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything. An expression of the name Ya Muhaymin. He watches over himself and others, guarding against wrong and keeping them to secure the things to which they have a right. The laws of physics which ensure a flawless order in the universe are the best evidence of the divine protection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created them over his servants. For instance, what would happen if Earth's gravity were less? Primarily, light things would not remain fixed on Earth. In the Middle East, breathe a dust or a sand particles would flit about for hours. The speed of rain drops would slow down, causing them to evaporate before falling on the ground. Newton's law of gravitation, which explains the decline balance between the orbits of Earth, the Moon, and the planets, is another example. A minor change in this balance would cause Earth to draw near to the sun and thus burn or be thrown onto space where it would be freeze. What would uh, a world deprived of friction between objects and surface look like? A pin would slip out of one's hand. Books and objects would slide down tables, and a table would slide and hit the wall. In brief, all objects would slide and roll in a world without frictions. And nuts would unfasten, nails and screws would come out, bricks would never function, and sound would continue to resound from one wall to another. Another example is Earth's secure and strong structure toward its center. The temperature rises by 30 Celsius or 86 Fahrenheit. Every kilometers reach probably 4,500 Celsius. At its core, when we consider that only one kilometer, which is 0.6214 miles, below the surface, the temperature reaches 60 or 140 Fahrenheit. We can grasp the dimensions of this threat. Despite this, however, all living beings lead their lives in absolute security unaware of the magma boiling underneath them. Clearly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creates a perfect order on Earth's surface, which actually shelters an internal ball of fire. Thus, there is no room for any randomness. He holds sway over the heavens and Earth and protects all living beings in the universe against all threats, whether known to them or not. Meanwhile, we, he places the fetus in a very protected place. And these examples show many things that seem normal to us, are in actually manifestation of his mercy and divine protection over his servants. For there is no other reason for the existence of such order and unity in the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of protectors. Allah 
واصلح لنا ديننا الذي هو عصمة أمرنا واصلح لنا دنيانا التي فيها معشنا واصلح لنا آخرتنا التي إليها معدنا واجعل الحياة زيادة لنا من كل خير والموت راحة لنا من كل شر ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا اللهم اشف مرضانا وارحم موتانا وبلغنا مما يرضيك آملنا واختم بالباقيات الصالحات عملنا اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا وإمامنا وقدوتنا وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإتاء القربة وينفع وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون وأخم الصلاة